This is a $200 drone that has GPS positioning, GPS tracking. It has a 4K camera up here with a three axis gimbal. So you've got real smooth video and real smooth footage from it. This is the Iashin EX4, direct from China. Like I said, $200 right in that range and has a lot of features, which is why I picked it up. I know nothing about drones. This is the first one I've ever owned. So let me show you some real quick footage of what this thing can do from a park nearby and then we'll talk about it. Not bad footage, right, for a $200 drone. And like I said, this thing has GPS in it, so it will track you, it follows you, which is something that some of the smaller drones out there don't have. It has circle or orbit, so you can have some dramatic pose. And you're just circling, drone, mmm, massive. This thing folds up very, very small. Here's my iPhone, so you can see. It's literally the same size as an iPhone. When we're ready to fly, it just unlocks. First one I've owned, and a couple things I've learned, guys. I've actually crashed it twice already, had to get some replacement parts and pieces, and in fact, right now, these blades need to get changed because of the most recent crash. I think 400 feet is the legal cap for flying drones as a civilian. So what I wanted to do with this little bitty drone, and again, this was kind of a windy day, but I wanted to test this thing out and see if I could get it up to 105 meters. I put a cap in there in the program or in the app, I capped it at 105 meters, knowing that 117 is the legal limit. It was also a windy day, it was kind of breezy, so I didn't want this little thing to just drift off somewhere where I'd never find it easy to do. Here we go. Let's switch to the screen. Where you're looking right now, guys, this is Centennial. It's basically looking over Centennial, Colorado, towards the front range or towards the mountains. I think the tall peak there is Mount Evans. Maybe wrong. I'm still learning the area, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and push play here, though. We start here at 50 meters, looking due west at the mountains. And as we climb, like I said, my goal was to hit 105. Now this is after the crash. You can see my gimbal is struggling a little bit. Not as clear. It's also windy, so it's fighting wind. 90 meters. 100 meters up. And 105. It made me so nervous. I couldn't really see the drone. I mean, it was still line of sight. I could kind of see it and hear it. But man, it was way up there. You can see all the cars there. Look how busy it was too before the quarantine and the lockdown. I immediately start bringing it back down because I get a little nervous. But really good footage, guys. Like, come on, that's pretty cool footage for a $200 drone, right? The reason I finally picked one of these up now that they're around $200 is because the way I plan on using it is packing it up, throwing it in my backpack when I'm out backpacking, and where allowed, pulling this drone out to get some sort of follow shot or some really dramatic shot. I had this you know, whole vision of the drone ascending, looking straight down on the hot tent, right? And the chimney's just smoking, smoke going everywhere, drones coming up, flap of the tent falls back, and I just have an ax come out, nod at the sun and then get to work. Saw what I was able to do at the park. Really nice footage for somebody who's never really uh, flown it before. This thing, once it establishes GPS connections, very cool, very nice to have. Now, the reason both times I've crashed this thing, it did the same thing, and that is it took off and then went right way off on me. And what I've also realized is it's because both times I had GPS lock but what I didn't check is on my app that's on the uh, controller, I didn't see if the GPS had me matched to my proper position. 
it takes this thing about a minute or two once it locks in to actually get its position correct. So when I first turn this thing on and boot up my app to fly it, it will give me the light that GPS is connected. It's ready to fly. However, it'll show that the drone's like 40 yards from where I am. And I think what happened on both occasions is I just took off way too quick and it starts trying to go and find itself. I fight it and turn it and crash it. So let's take a look at some of this video. I take off and immediately try to go fly. Uh, oh, it's starting to go right on me. It's starting to go right. I try to turn it left, but instead of drifting left, I spin it left. Hold on, let me go back. So what happened is when this thing took off, it starts going over this way. Instead of me drifting or strafing back the other way, I turned it. Then when I tried to go forward, me thinking it would be this way, it was going this way. So I spun it the wrong way. I, I just got it all out of whack. So watch it. Let's watch the whole thing again here. So it's now I turn it. Uh oh, now I think I'm going, I'm just all out of whack. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Now I'm taking it down intentionally. Ooh, that's not what you want to see from your drone. So I took it down intentionally there knowing that I could have a pretty soft landing in the dirt. It was much better than concrete cars and houses that were uh, just on the other side of that road. The first time I crashed this thing, it did that same thing. I didn't bring it down though, and I just was trying to fight it, way out of control, spinning it, and it goes all the way 300 yards away from me, crashing and skidding on a street, broke one of the arms, broke propellers, had to get new ones and uh, replace those. All right, so this is the Eashin EX4. which you buy from a website called banggood.com out of China. And here it is, banggood. No thanks. And 244, because that's with multiple batteries. If we go down to one battery, 209.99. You get the drone, you get the uh, controller with the app for your phone, a nice little storage case. Really, really nice little setup, guys, for $209. Ugh. Eee, here's a sign of our times, guys. And one of the reasons I'm doing so many videos from this room is because we are all inside more than normal. We probably should be. And it's quarantine is, is what we are right now. So hopefully everybody's safe that you know, and hopefully it stays that way, guys. I mean that uh, wholeheartedly to everybody out there. This warehouse cannot ship to your location. This is one thing, guys, I used to deal with logistics companies all the time. Right now in Long Beach, our ports are closed. It's kind of spooky to see. So it's going to be a little while till these come again from Banggood, it looks like. So I'm not going to do a full review of this drone. Like I said, I just wanted to show what uh, you could get for $200 these days. Also, try to think of some ideas or brainstorm or hear from you guys if you have ideas on how to use these in videos for camping and backpacking. Can't use these in wilderness areas. Designated wilderness, not allowed. State parks, not allowed. National parks, not allowed. National forest, allowed. You can do them in national forests as long as it's not a park or wilderness. The other thing with these is to not be annoying to other people, right? They can be loud. If people are out in nature, the last thing they're gonna wanna hear is for 20 minutes as some guy walks by and his drone is getting cool footage, right? So gotta find some balance and respectful balance of how to use this but gonna incorporate it more and more. Hike Camp, I've been watching your drone footage, by the way, and that is some cool stuff, man. That's what I'm talking about. Getting some, and that's some high footage too from the woods or the forest. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff. So guys, I don't have a lot more to say than this other than I'm playing with it. If you guys have ideas, make sure to give them to me in the comments. I'd love to hear about how you use drones, how you've crashed drones, all of your experiences, because for me, it's brand new. But appreciate you guys watching. As always, stay safe out there. Talk to you soon. Bye.